Hi. Hi guys. It's Kendrick from Providence. You know what? I haven't done a reading in a while for YouTube or Insta. So I feel like it's the time. And now I'm here, you know, just finished teaching uh, these sessions. And now I'm gonna go and read soon. So why not do the warm up here? Okay. It's been a while. Okay, let's see. I don't know what's gonna happen. I don't even know like what's gonna come up. I have no Kaluiana. Okay, let's see. Kalua. Honey, I haven't had Kalua since my early days in Atlanta, honey. One night I mis mixed that Kahlua with some peach fuzzy navel or whatever the that was that I was drinking, child. And honey, I never touched it again. Ooh. Okay, you saw that. You saw the jumps, the jumpers. It's, it, I thought it was two, but it's actually three cards. Oh gosh. Okay, so let me go ahead and cut her. We don't know what's at the bottom of the deck yet. I want it to be a surprise. Let's see what three cards, ooh, Seven of Cups. Oh, the Hierophant and the Seven of Wands. So this is general, um, you know, collective. Take it as it resonates. I can say that here, but I cannot say that when I read for people personally, okay? <laughs> so, Seven of Cups. This is mixed emotions, right? And this card is active emotions. But I don't know if you are going in the right direction, you know? Uh, these are toxic relationships or toxic relationships that uh, cause you to react and respond in a way that isn't in your best interest. So be mindful of that, right? It's time to be in control of your emotions. Don't give your power away. It's Scorpio. And don't give your power away to relationships that you can't control. When people misbehave, when people go against the expectations that you set out, you know, that you had set out from, for them at the beginning of whatever situation that's occurring, you know, um, let that go, you know? And it's easier said than done. So it's gonna take some work because it's a seven and it's gonna take some practice, you know? That's the only way that you're going to find balance and harmony within yourself is if you don't allow others to affect how you treat yourself, okay? And, and how you act, okay? And this is also self-destructive um, actions that are coming from a place of disillusionment. Okay, so if you're not feeling the best, maybe it's not time to interact with certain people. Or if you're not feeling the best, maybe it's time to, you know, not do something that's only going to make you feel worse. You know, a lot of the times this is, these are emotions as a shared resource. And you know, re emotions can be, a shared resource because you could be sharing love, but if it's, you know, destructive patterns or if it's, you know, uh, not being able to see the truth, right? Or not being able to find some sort of peace because it's a seven or some kind of harmony, right? It's saying all of the things that you have been reaching for and all of the things that you have been using as coping mechanisms are not going to be energy suppliers in the way. It, you need to shift the energy, the sevens, right? So it's like, don't do the things that are extreme. 
do the things that are going to be reassuring, positively reassuring, not negatively reassuring. And if it's something that you enjoy that could have negative effects or negative repercussions or there could be some uh, karma tied to it, you know what I mean? It's like, don't get in your own way and don't allow your emotions to lead you and don't act or behave based on your emotions. Understand that your feelings are, they are confusing, right? They are misleading sometimes. And sometimes we are misled by people, places and things, ideas, right? That are familiar to us, you know? So make sure that you are being emotionally supportive towards yourself. And that's in a, in a plethora of different ways, right? Some of you might be dealing with somebody named Ray. Okay, because that W turned into an R, honey. <laughs> <sighs> Don't take this into your future. You know? The conflict is that you are holding on to regret shoulda, coulda, wouldas. I wish it would have been different if they would have only, if I could have only, if it were only. Forget about all of that. All of those things that I just said made my arms get heavier and heavier and heavier and heavier. Okay? So let go of what doesn't belong to you emotionally. Don't take that on. It's not a show of strength, endurance, or stamina if it's something that wears you down emotionally, okay? And I feel like in some relationships, or maybe even just within yourself, right? Because it's about me and it's about others, right? Understand that whatever reaction or response that they give you that is, a, that is an emotional reaction, it's not yours, you know? Yes, people can say, they made me feel, but you can also say, or think, or believe, I felt like this when. Okay? And understand why you might be feeling the way that you're feeling. And when you're able to sit with those emotions and truly, seven, understand them, that's the advantage of the conflict. The conflict is, oh, I'm feeling this way. The, the advantage is, oh, I have sifted through, right, these emotions, and I understand that this is just a trauma response, right? This is a reaction. And even though I feel this fire up in here, right, I wanna do something about this fire here. I wanna put this fire out when I feel this way. Where can, what can I do with this? What can I do with this energy? Oh, it's my energy. It's my power. I won't give power away to this feeling because I know eventually when I sit with this feeling and I understand the origin of the who, what, where, when, and why, I will realize that there are a lot of different 
factors, a lot of different layers, a lot of different elements that come together to make up this feeling. And if I pick them apart, I will understand that it really is just a cacophony. Okay? Of everything balled up together. So I have to become unwound first. We. To truly understand where these emotions are coming from. And therein lies the, the karma, the lesson. And then we can chariot towards a new experience. We can transmute that energy just like we can use water to run clocks. And we can use water to power things, okay? Water is a source of energy and it's a conductor of electricity. So redirect your emotional energy. It's going to be hard because it's a seven pulling the, you're pulling, okay? Saturn is exalted in the seventh house. It's going to be hard. The tower rules the sevens. It's going to be hard as well. Sometimes it's hard to break things down that have built up over time. But you can do it. You're gonna do it. You know that song? <laughs> oh my God. What is it? What is that? It's a no doubt song. Uh, you gotta catch up to win the race. Straighten yourself out. But listen to that no doubt song. Listen to that no doubt song. And you will get messages. It's called, You Can Do It. I'm a millennial. <laughs> and I feel like I'm the greatest generation. And, and then I feel like I'm a baby boomer. And then I feel like I'm a, a generation X. And then I feel like I'm a, I'm a Gen Zer. And it's, so, it's crazy. <sighs> the Hierophant. Values. <laughs> okay? These are the ways that we were taught to be. This is what we are familiar with. Okay? This is how we have been supplied to deal with life. This is consciousness, right? We value what we are conscious of. We do not value what we are unconscious of, which would be like kind of the death card. Oh my God, I don't want to be there in the death card. I mean, now I'm, I'm afraid to leave what I know. Taurus is opposite Scorpio. It's saying that you are limited in your reality and you are limited in your capabilities until you allow yourself to evolve, moon, and change phases and change faces and learn new things, which the key represents knowledge and wisdom that comes from an outside source. You learn more about yourself when you um, allow yourself to experience other cultures, 
other people. You know, this is Taurus. It is Venus. Venus is exalted in Pisces, okay? Very much compassion, unconditional love, understanding, patience. That's what this requires. But we get comfortable in our own reality. You know, and it becomes challenging to transform or to allow ourselves to, I don't know. experience something that we have never seen before. What is he pointing at? Everything that exists outside of your reality that you will have to face, you will have to accept Venus, Moon, exalted, Just, that's just the reality of this situation. You know, okay, look, Seven of Wands. Again, pushing forward. It's so interesting because you got two fixed. Actually, it's all three fixed. <laughs> Damn. You got Scorpio, you got Taurus, you got Leo. So, May is gonna be a time, or Taurus season is gonna be a time that we're going to be, you know, moving forward, pushing through, overcoming obstacles, right? July is significant here. July is very significant because there could be some sort of like um, passing of some sort of public figure. You know, July gives us cancer energy, but then it also gives us Leo energy. Right? And the Hierophant is representative of a pillar in the community, a leader, maybe someone that people are familiar with, maybe even around the world, who knows? <laughs> okay, so the Seven of Wands is pushing through, right? This is uh, pushing, pushing, pushing through towards a victory. Or, or moving forward, okay? Pushing forward towards a victory. The advance, the conflict is that you're experiencing pushback. But maybe the pushback is coming from being authentic. Right? But that's all a part of this game. Right? The Seven of Wands says that you are meant to stand up for what you believe in, which is also yourself. Standing up for yourself. Leo rules the spine. The seventh house rules the lower back. Right? So, in order to become stronger, you've got to experience a little bit of resistance. Right? You literally do. 
which is opposition. Opposition creates strength. Gravity, standing strong, right? So being the strongest version of yourself requires you to experience resistance, okay? From yourself, from others, experience opposition too, you know? Because opposition also can create harmony. Conflict creates harmony. That is why the sevens are conflict, but with the advantage, okay? So the conflict, you got the sevens here, right? And the five, sorry, I'm like, you got the sevens, and it's literally the five. Okay, so. We value stability. We value peace. Without peace, nothing can exist. And this is not me saying this, I believe. There, there's some public figure uh, who said this. I don't think it was Sadhguru, so I'm not gonna say it was, it was them, but it was someone in that arena, you know, of that status. And it's true. But sometimes without conflict, there can be no peace. And this is, you know, conflict that is going to be reharmonized, right? So this is someone coming in or something coming in and it is very significant that brings balance, stability, that creates a way for us to not ignore something anymore, right? About ourselves, okay? Don't ignore who you are. Don't forget who you are. But also, don't get stuck on yourself. You know? The Hierophant says that we have to open up our minds. And it is about a higher power. Everybody is so concerned with themselves. And yes, you need to be concerned with yourself in order to survive and become anything, right? Because how would you, how would you evolve <laughs> if you weren't, you know, focused on yourself? But with the Hierophant being community and it being a card of balance, it being a card of value, it being a card of longevity, Stability, I already said that. Stamina. Anyway, I feel like this reading is saying that change is definitely on the horizon. There is the you know, resolution or the completion to some things that have been challenging, okay, emotionally and physically for some people. Some people may have been experiencing some deaths maybe, or just illness or sickness or depression, things like that. Things that are not, 
ideal to experience for long periods of time. How about that? So now we're finding stability all over again. We're finding uh, strength from our spirituality, you know? Do what grounds you. Do what pleases you on a very practical level, you know? That starts with your needs. What are my needs? What do I need right now? Okay, I'm gonna focus on that. I'm going to focus on eating well, sleeping well, enjoying my work, um, finding value in my, my daily life, finding value in structure, okay? That's also peace and harmony. And that means that sometimes you're going to have to become a different version of yourself, right? That's the strength or the opposition or the pushing through or the resistance that you're, you're using to move forward, you know? So sometimes you have to resist, you know, what others may want for you or from you Okay, so that you feel as though you are moving forward. Because a lot of the times people just want to keep you held back. Or they want you to stay the same. Or they don't want you to realize that you haven't been as authentic as you could have been. Or may have wanted to be. You know, this is about not stepping back so that others can move forward. And it is not about you allowing yourself to be pushed into a corner. Nobody puts baby in a corner. You know? Bye guys. And gals. And them and they. Whoever you are, wherever you are, however you are. All right. Thank you. Like, share, and subscribe. Follow. Thank you. Talk soon. Hope you got some messages.